As we all know, the fine folks over at Line 6 recently dropped their incredible firmware 3.50 for Helix and HX Stomp family products. And what an update it is. I know the title to this video says uh, Create a Great Tone Revised 2023. I already did a 2022 edition, but I really thought this firmware warranted a whole new video. And we're so close to 2023, and I know we're not going to have another one of these for a while. So let's go with 2023, even though we're still in 2022. So today I what I wanted to do, revisit my original number one video that I did for the Line 6 Helix and talking about how I kind of create presets and create a template that I kind of start all my presets off of and then tweak from there depending on what I'm trying to accomplish or what amp I'm using or what the end goal is going to be. So today I wanted to update those templates with some new features that we have in the firmware 3.50. These templates are going to be up on Custom Tone. Go grab them for free. You can use them as the basis for your presets if you like. You're obviously gonna to have to do a couple things here though. There's not going to be an amp in this particular template because that's going to be a personal choice. I am putting a cab in here just because the new cab section in firmware 3.5 is such an integral part of the improvements we'll call them, that they've added to the Helix. So these are going to be starting points. I'm going to have, as you're going to see, a Greenback 25 cab, and it's a cab I use a lot, especially for overdriven, distorted tones. But you can easily just swap that out, and I'll talk about the miking choices that I make for this template. And I'm going to have two templates, a stereo and a mono. So without further ado, let's dive over to HX Edit, and we'll see what we have going on. All right, so here we are over in HX Edit. And you'll notice here, I have JS template Helix HLX Stereo and JS Template Helix Mono. We'll start here on the Mono template and we'll work our way through. So you'll notice I'm starting here on my input block. And you know, this is one feature we received recently. I can't remember if it was in 3.15, but the ability to turn the guitar pad on, off, or set it to global settings on our guitar input pad. So this is important because if I create a preset and share it with somebody and they always play with their guitar input pad on but I created it with it off, that preset is gonna sound different. Now again, if they have super high output pickups then that's gonna change everything as well. But I kinda like to have this ability to bake into the preset what my selection was here. The end user can always come in here and turn it on, turn it off, or just keep it on their global settings. So I set that to off. I also set my input gate on a threshold of around minus 48 and I keep the decay around 500 milliseconds and my guitar input impedance, I usually keep set to auto unless there's a special circumstance that I need to change that for. So that's kind of what my input block looks like. Now, coming to the end of the chain here, I have my LA Studio Comp, which I kind of use as what I call my little mastering section at the end is uh, just to kind of polish the tone up. So a couple words about this. I have this in stereo regardless of the fact that this preset, well, I, I call this preset mono, but I mean, I guess it, it really is stereo. I do have stereo transistor tape, but you'll notice I have the spread way down. It, it, it really kind of, and we have the stereo dynamic ambient. So it's not really uh, a mono preset, but it collapses to mono really nicely. But the reason I'm calling it mono is because of the single cab, not the dual cab. And in the stereo, we're going to have the dual cab. So just so that's clarified, because I know some people point that out and say, hey, this is actually a stereo preset. And it, it is. But this works really nice in mono as well. So I have my LA Studio Comp at the end here. Uh, peak reduction of 5.5 and gain at 5. Now, I can't stress this enough. That's a starting point. Um, you have to realize that if I go put an amp in over here and I turn the channel volume up, let's say, that's going to send more signal down the line through all the other blocks after it. And the more signal that hits the front of that compressor, the more it's going to compress. So I'm only ever aiming for maybe one dB, maximum two dB of gain reduction here. So a lot of folks, this has been a, a point of contention for a lot of folks. You shouldn't have a compressor after your delay and your reverb. And I agree with that in a lot of cases, but in this particular case, and I've stated this so many times, but I think in this video, it's very important to state it again. I'm barely touching it. I just like what little bit of maybe glue that LA Studio Comp gives at the end, regardless of whether it's after my time-based effects like delay and reverb. But as I've said many times before, if you prefer it somewhere else, like there, there you go. It just takes that small amount of time to just drag it over. So it's so easy 
to edit this and tweak this to what you would prefer for your preferences. But what I will say is when you add your amp, when you change any level controls of what is feeding into the compressor, please go and check on your helix unit, your gain reduction meter, to make sure that we're only sitting within that one to two dB of gain reduction. This could actually negatively affect your sound if you're driving so much signal into it that you're getting seven, eight, nine dB of gain reduction, you're going to notice it and it's probably not gonna be pleasant. So that's what I have set up for that. I do have my little parametric EQ block here. This is where I choose to do my low and high cuts. I, I usually start off at 100 hertz on the low cut and high cut at 12 kilohertz. Again, this is personal preference. This is my starting point. You will have to tweak this. This is a template, nothing is carved in stone. You'll have to tweak this depending on your particular situation and just your particular preference preference. Now, a lot of folks ask, well, why don't you use just the simple low and high cut block and save on some DSP? Well, that's a good point, I guess, but there are times where I do like to come into the parametric EQ depending on the preset, depending on the amp, depending on what I'm trying to accomplish at the end. I'm trying to give somebody a, a, a preset that just has a finished sound to it. I may come in here and make some cuts. You know, I might go into the mids at 400, 450 hertz with a Q of around 1.4 and pull out 1 dB or 2 dB just to clean up some mud and give it some clarity. But that's uh, totally up to us. So that's why I have the parametric block. Now, here's one of the first changes. On the reverb, I'm actually throwing in the dynamic ambience reverb. This is a wonderful new addition. I love this so much. Uh, I'm still keeping it in the same position after my delay. Uh, some folks would say put it right after the cab, and that's fine. Again, we can just drag it up, you know. I'm not saying that any of this is carbon stone. Everybody can do what they want with it. But I went with the room size of 12 meters, pre-delay of five milliseconds, damping of five kilohertz, diffusion at 50%. I put the shape up to late 100, I really like that setting, brought the mix back to 40%, low cut at 100 hertz, high cut at 10 kilohertz, trails on, really lovely addition. Now, we also have the transistor tape, uh, we can use it or not use it. This is my favorite little delay we have in the Helix. Uh, feedback at 22%, mix at 26%. Like I said, the spread is very low, so we're not gonna get a ton of like wide stereo effects. It'll sum to mono quite nicely. Here's one of the most important blocks for this template as far as I'm concerned, and others may disagree, but they don't have to use it. They can do this, watch, it's real simple. I can turn it off, and then it's not in the chain anymore. But I like it on, I set my low frequency at 650 hertz and my high frequency at 650 hertz. I usually start off as a starting point, adding 2 dB to all those frequencies in that shelf EQ above 650 hertz and pulling out 2 dB underneath all the frequencies at 650 hertz. I find that this makes it sit nicely in the mix, gives it a little bit of clarity, gets rid of some mud, gives it a nice fullness. All those frequencies at around 800, 900 get a little tiny gentle boost, a little bit of the sizzly frequencies do, but not too much. And then we pull out some of that mud and some of the frequencies that may get in the way of a kick drum or bass guitar, much like we kind of do in while putting the low cut in there. So very mild moves, but I find that they're very effective. And I'll show you how those sound on and off in a moment. So then we come over to the most exciting part of the firmware 3.5 update. That's our new cab block and I'm using the 412 Greenback 25 here. Uh, you can choose whatever you want. I'm just using this as an example. That's what I have in there. That's probably for me the speaker cab that I use the most in the Helix, especially for overdriven distorted tones. But obviously, you know, if you're switching to a Fender amp, you're probably not gonna want that one. You're gonna maybe wanna go with one of the Fender style cabs that kind of match better with that amp. So again, this is not carved in stone, but this is what's going to be in the preset. And obviously you're gonna have to add an amp of choice. I've decided to go with the 121 ribbon mic, my one of my favorite mics of all time. Uh, and my position is on the cap edge. So instead of, you know, dead center, although I find that the dead center works really nicely too, uh, because this is a mic that doesn't have a lot of high end and sizzle to it, sometimes going somewhere from center. I'm gonna keep this on the cap edge, but keep in mind that you can easily just adjust this however you need to. So we'll start with the cap edge and then adjust from there. And I would probably wanna have this distance probably around three inches. So we will keep it there. Low and high cut turned off simply because I've already baked those in over here. And uh, zero degree, 45 degree. 45 degrees gonna maybe smooth out the tone a little bit, but I'm gonna start with it at zero degrees. Now this is gonna sound like this. 
<laughs> just a DI tone going through a cab and some effects. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to add an amp and see what happens here. So I'm going to choose an amp and I'm going to roll all the way down to our new Vitriol Crunch amp, which I really, really like. So this is what this sounds like when we just drop it in at the default settings. I did not save a favorite here. Or anything. This is just the default settings that come up on the Vitriol Crunch. <laughs> All right, now let's do this. Let's turn everything off that we have in the chain. And this is what it sounds like without my little template, just with the cab settings that I chose. So what I hear there is not a terrible tone, but it's a little muddy, a little boomy. It's lacking some cut. It's not probably gonna work in a mix. That's gonna need some work. Now you could say, well, I'll just simply come over here and I'll move the mic around. So I'm gonna go, you know, to the center and I'm gonna move this in closer. Or I'm gonna move it further. One thing I love about ribbon mics is that they take EQ nicely. They usually need some sort, or we can blend it obviously with another mic. But one of my favorite things is to do what I was just showing you before. We'll go three inches here and we're gonna go cap edge. So there's the tone we have. Now I'm gonna start making additions here. This is gonna give us a little boost in volume. And a lot of folks might say, well, you're not at unity gain anymore. You know, the compressor's boosting your volume. I have it set like that because it's an always on thing for me. I just leave it on. So it's not gonna be something I'm gonna turn on and off. So it's fine the way it is. So we add that in. Bring in our low and high cut. That's gonna be very subtle. Bring in our dynamic ambience verb. Love it, so nice. I'll bring in the transistor tape so you can hear what it sounds like. And here is the little magic block that I love so much. So here we have a little bit of mud, maybe lacking some clarity. I turn that on. And all of a sudden, it's a little bit more mix ready. As far as I'm concerned, it's something that I like to do. And I had a lot of folks ask me, now that we have these new cabs, are you still going to do this? Are you still going to have compression? Are you still going to have this? I am. I'm not saying anybody else has to. Everybody can have their own workflow and ideal. So that's basically how this template's going to work. Let's drop in a different amp. Let's just drop in the PV Panama. It's nice and close. <laughs> So with those starting points, I can basically have a decent tone out of just about anything I drop in there. Now, obviously, like I said, I, I probably wouldn't put this Fullerton Jump amp model through a Greenback 25. <laughs> But again, it sort of does work anyways. Okay, so let's go back to our vitriol crunch. So you can kind of see this is gonna give us a nice starting point to get us off and running right away and we can make our own tweaks from there. But now let's go over 
to our JS template Helix stereo. And like I said before, it's not, they're both stereo presets, but this is more referring to the cab section. So same, same settings all around here. I'm not gonna go through the explanation again as to why I did this. I just did that. All the same settings for everything. We come up to our cab now and I have a dual cab. So what I've done here, and there's a whole bunch of ways we can work with this. We could work with this dual cab still in mono and we could just have everything pan to the center, maybe with a uh, 121 ribbon on one speaker and an SM57 on the other. Very classic combination. We could use our level control to balance it. If we wanted more 57, we would, you know, maybe bump the level up on that or less of one. Maybe we just bring the level down on our particular speaker in the cab block. That's one way to do it. I find I've kind of gravitated away from that and kind of just using one mic more now and I've just been enjoying that. It doesn't mean I won't mix up with multiple mics at times, but I just find lately I've been working more often than not just one mic. But this is gonna be a different way of doing this and more of a stereo spread type of thing. So what I've done is I've chosen two Greenback 25 412s and a 121 ribbon, cap edge, three inches back, same settings as we had, but I've panned this hard left. Now again, some folks might say, well, I only wanna go slightly to the left or slightly to the right, you know? But I'm gonna go hard left and right on this. Uh, I'm gonna keep my delay at zero, but we'll talk about that in a second. When we switch over to the other speaker, I've added a 160 ribbon mic. So my idea here is that I'm not doing something so dramatically different to the 121. Something that is a little bit different, but paired up with another ribbon mic, but slightly different frequency response. Uh, two inches back on the cap edge, and then I've panned that hard right, and again, with no delay. So that's gonna sound like this, and let me just do this. Let's go and add in that same PV vitriol crunch at these sort of stock settings. And we can compare the difference between the single cab, kind of the, the mono cab versus the stereo cab. <laughs> So that's basically it. Now let's go back and forth. Let me save that. Here it is with the mono cab, the one mic. And I just thought here, let's do this. Let's bring our delay in so we have the exact same thing happening on both. We'll go back to our mono cab here. So it's subtle, but we do get a nice little bit of stereo addition to it for the fact that in both speakers, we're hearing slightly different tones. Now we could also go and do something like this where I put a dramatically different tone in one side. I almost find that a little more distracting though because they're too dramatically different. So something like this. going to be up to us which one we decide on. I oftentimes gravitate more towards this kind of a thing. Because then in the studio, maybe if I'm playing, I'm going to pan that out and maybe double it and pan it the other side. And I much prefer that sound anyways with two different performances. Alrighty, there you have it. What did you guys think? That's my new update to my template. Those are both up on Custom Tone. Again, I can't say it enough. I have that speaker cab in there. I'm not suggesting that's the one you should use. Uh, that's just more to show an example of how I would set up 
both the stereo cab and a mono cab situation. And it'll always be up to you to choose the cab you want, but you could try similar ideas. And obviously there's not going to be an amp in this template. That's gonna be up to you to choose the amp that you want. But I think you'll notice that by adding in that little signal chain that it kind of just gives for maybe a more polished mix ready sound right away, both for live and studio playing. And I hope you guys enjoy it. And if you don't like this, that's fine too. Everybody has different ways of working. And that's the beauty of this. We can all come up with great results, sometimes using very different methods. And I think that should be celebrated. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Go grab those templates and I hope you enjoy them. I I really, really do. And thank you so much for spending your time with me. Uh, please like the video, share it with anybody who you think would get some useful enjoyment out of watching it. And also please subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content out. Thank you guys again so much for tuning in. Ciao for now.